Zach Laws of Gold Derby here with Wiley Stateman. He's the supervising sound editor of Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And Wiley, you've worked with Tarantino many times over the last uh, couple of decades. Uh, couple of uh, decades <laughs> it has been that long um what's he doing right as a director that uh you know makes you want to keep coming back and, and working with him over and over again you know I, quentin's process is really about um working with music and allowing that to inform his writing process his thought process and uh, i i just love his sensibility and and the way that uh, he's telling stories and using sound so it's it's a it's such a pleasure to work with him, with Fred Raskin, with his producing team, uh, Shannon McIntosh and company, and um, you know it keeps me coming back. I really enjoy working for Quentin and uh, working with my team and uh, Mark Ulano, the production mixer, Mike Minkler, and in this case Chris Minkler, you know, uh, doing the final re-recording mixing. Um, we have a little family, and in in terms of sound, we're um, we're sort of like a, a very well-oiled enterprise, you know, yeah. we're like an audio collective. We, you know, Mark gathers the material. We, you know, uh, I refine it and uh, work with uh, Fred and Quentin to get the cut standing up and, and Mike uh, puts the final touches on it sound wise. Well, this, uh, this movie is so interesting because it's, uh, it feels incredibly personal to Tarantino, you know, because it's so much about the movies and the music and the television that influenced him. Um, it's about uh, old Hollywood of yore. How did all of those different elements influence your work uh, in terms of the sound? You know, it, it always, my work starts in the beginning, you know, with the script. And so Quentin's um, sort of imagined this film set to music uh, without a, a composer. And those songs were really influential. That and KHJ Radio, uh, the DJs of that time, uh, Humble Harve and, and, uh, and company, um, these are people that were like iconic in sort of telling the story of 1969. So, the music really sets the, um, uh, you know, a voice for the film that's, uh, you know, critical in, in setting the period. And uh, in terms of sound, we worked sort of around that and gave um, design elements uh, a chance to sort of bring in music, bring out music, or just fill the gaps where uh, a song wouldn't have been appropriate. So um, it's a, you know, Quentin's films are a pastiche of, of uh, audio design and uh, really a very interesting canvas to, to work on. Yeah, it's so interesting. I, I heard him talk at the Grammy Museum about the soundtrack for the movie and about how he wanted it to sound like it was off of, uh, you know, FM radio at the time and, uh, you know, listening, how he listened to all these different uh, archival tracks, you know, of radio stations from LA, from the late 1960s, and how that all kind of wove together to create uh, this unique soundscape for the movie. You know, it's just so interesting. You know, Quentin, Quentin writes with music in his head. And so from that very early part of the process, um, we have a really wonderful outline and um, working to, to known songs and working with, um, songs that are in place that are not just proxies for things that will be replaced later allows us to really coordinate the the sound and the, and the rhythms and the textures uh, to be very sort of um, holistic and complete in the early stages of the process so that the, the cut is um, very much worked with sound in mind and uh, it's a very interesting, you know, sort of early prototyping process that he uses uh, that I'm really, really pleased with. I love the results. It's uh, very uh, much coordinated. It's hard to tell where the sound design begins and where the music enters or, or, or exits. It all becomes one cohesive, um, you know, uh, sonic fabric that tells the, the story that he's, uh, that he's after. So let's just dive in a little bit to some of the, uh, the ways that you use sound thematically, right? Um, how did you uh, t talk a little bit about how your work helped tell the story in the case of this movie? 
the story is is really it's a uh, it's a story about Hollywood in 1969, but it's also very much a story where the sort of John Wayne generation is giving way to the Easy Rider generation, and so music is expressed in those terms as well. And some of the the commercials and the the, the pieces from KHJ that uh, that Quentin himself selected. Uh, became a really instrumental part and sort of backbone for the soundtrack. Uh, but the things that I really love about Quentin's films are the long entrances and the, the presentation of a scene by allowing these sort of uh, design textures to uh, to have have breadth and scope. So, for instance, the the scene where they arrive at the Spawn Ranch. Uh, Quentin didn't want to have a song really describe the evil of that place. So he's, he basically said, let's do it with, with sound effects and sound design and, and, uh, tortured organic elements and whatnot. And he shoots with that in mind. So there's all these wonderful cuts. You know, Fred is really in tune with this idea of creating sound design and using a vocabulary of sound design that actually flatters a cut to a more wide shot or, a punch in or you know there's there are rhythms like the the scene in the trailer where uh, leonardo's having a breakdown after dropping lines on the set and feeling like such a failure you know those scenes are very plosive percussive scenes where each one of those shots has head and tail but in order to cut that sequence together you have to understand the rhythms and to understand how sound bits will kind of comprise the montage. And, uh, you know, it's really, it's, it's fascinating to work alongside picture, um, to have uh, this early prototyping available uh, in the cutting room and the approval process uh, handled as it is, you know, in, in, in sort of early stage uh, development of the cut. Um, and I think that's what gives uh, Quentin a, such an interesting voice uh, in terms of sound. Um, he gives the audience a chance to um, to sort of linger, and his his cutting patterns are sort of uh, informed by uh, music, and 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 where there is no music, uh, sound design. It's interesting to hear you talk about you know these examples of sound, you know these sort of quieter moments, um, because I think that most people, when they think about your work, would probably uh, look to. Um, I don't want to give anything away for people who haven't seen the movie, but you know some of the more violent passages <laughs> of the film. Um, is it almost more difficult to to design scenes that are a, a little bit more quiet, atmospheric, things like that, as opposed to sort of like big action sequences? You know, working as a sound designer and a, and a supervising sound editor, the the challenge in doing quiet sequences is to really understand the why sound is playing a role. Um, the how portion, the selection of sounds, while that's important, the most important thing I think is, is how does it make the audience feel and how does it either speed up or uh, become a companion uh, to the, to the story beats and the, and the cutting patterns. And I think with Quentin's films, there's a certain suggestion that violence um, is one, it's heinous, but two, that it it can be a relief in it, and revenge is 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 quite sweet and and often the depth of a character. An example is uh, Brad Pitt in the the boat sequence, uh, where he's recalling the experience um, that he had with his wife. Um, that scene was purposefully created in a very nebulous sort of way so that sound could sort of punctuate the end of it and leave a, a doubt in the audience's mind um, as to what the actual outcome was. And it, it's important for the for uh, Brad Pitt's character. You know, this is uh, this is a moment where sound design was able to speak the end of that sequence and do it in a way that suggests one thing to maybe one member of the audience and and something else to another but that's that's part of the the beauty i think in terms of uh how quentin sees uh sound as a as a contributing uh as a collaborating art force yeah 
Uh, as somebody who lives in L.A., one of my favorite elements of this movie were all the moments of uh, people driving around in L.A. Um, and uh, <laughs> how it was a little bit easier to get around back in those days than it is now. Um, <laughs> obviously, um, you know, the sounds of the radio are so important in those uh, moments. But, you know, uh, there's a lot of your work in there as well. Can you talk a little bit about what you were going for there? Yeah. Um, well, driving scenes are really important um, in, in the filmmaking process for Quentin. And it's equally important for him that we use the production sound and that uh, whatever issues there might be in terms of recording an actor in a car driving himself at 50, 60 miles an hour with the windows down, you know, those were things that, uh, again, uh, fall on Mark Ulano first, uh, myself and my team, our, our, our dialogue, um, you know, editors, uh, editor Mike Hurtline and, and, and Lindsay Alvarez, I mean, did a, just a beautiful job on, on working with these production uh, recordings and presenting them to, to Mike Minkler, who also did a beautiful job in uh, smoothing them into the track and making them feel natural and, and, and alive. Um, but uh, working with cars is, uh, in, it, of, in and of itself, um, more of a problem sometimes than a challenge. But I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, with the application of music and radio and, and the way these scenes are cut together, um, it's really just story. So I don't want to get lost in sort of the how, uh, but why do we have driving sequences? Because it's really wonderful. It's a wonderful way to transition from one location to another and to also then introduce a song and introduce uh, some other textures. I, I love when we go to the drive-in um, mm -hmm. where we have Brad uh, Pitt, you know, heading home. He's going to feed his dog. It's a beautiful setup for meeting uh, his world and, and uh, the, the small nature of how he lives and his dog Brandy. And uh, I, Quentin lays clues in real one that, pay off in real eight or nine it's a it's a his structure and his sensibility about structure is really quite quite interesting fun to work with yeah absolutely it's really fun also to go back and rewatch uh movies like this over and over again and kind of see the little ways that you know uh visual and audible clues are laid throughout the film in order to set you up for what's to come is there maybe a specific example of something that you hid in uh, maybe the first half of the movie that pays off later or, you know, recurring themes that you can point to in your own work? Well, you know, uh, of course, you know, that's really, that kind of structure is what makes Quentin Tarantino, uh, what makes a Quentin Tarantino film. Uh, but I would suggest in, in Once Upon a Time uh, in Hollywood, there are clues. There's the the introduction of the flamethrower in, in real one in Mousseau and Franks that then is repeated again later in the film. And that's something, you know, Harry Cohen, who's been my sound effects designer and, and friend and, and creative partner for so many years. Um, he's really, uh, really talented and, and with his work and, and Sylvan and, and, uh, Leo Marcel, you know, we're constantly looking for ways to tease an idea or to present uh, a sound or a sound motif that has a deeper meaning than just in that particular moment. Um, and it's throughout the film. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's very much part of the structure of a Quentin Tarantino film. Mm -hmm. Before I let you go, you know, you've received eight Oscar nominations throughout your career, two of which I should point out were for movies you did with Quentin Tarantino. Um, what does that recognition mean for you? I, you know, the, for me, it's, um, you know, I do what I do because I have a passion to, um, to work with sound. You know, it's, uh, it's been a great pleasure. And, and uh, over the course of my professional life, I've, um, I've tried to do my best work in the moment. So a nomination, while it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing and it's very gratifying to be recognized by your peers. Um, it, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's not the, the result, uh, that, that is so interesting. It's the opportunity to work at the highest level with interesting filmmakers and to constantly reinvent myself. So, uh, I often am challenging for, for my crews because I like to uh, 
you know, for me, it's the how and the why, and the how can change from one project to the next and from one filmmaker to the next. So the type of work that I would do for Quentin is very different than the type of work I did for other filmmakers. Um, but uh, it's 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 lovely, I guess, that it's um, it's been respected over time, and uh, I I very much appreciate uh, working at the at the high end of this uh, of this film sound industry. Yeah. Well, you are incredibly prolific, I should say. Um, what are you working on now? Anything you can tell us about? Well, I you know right now I'm, I'm working to um, to help see you know. Quentin's film to its uh, its conclusion. Uh, I'm doing a lot of uh, film localization work, which I, I find very interesting. I think that uh, bringing film to the international market is truly a sound problem, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm kind of dedicating uh, a, a big part of my future to uh, to solving that sound problem and making sure that as we introduce other languages to uh, to a film soundtrack that we preserve the creative intent and that uh, we recognize the, that the, the need and the ambition of the original content creator uh, be, um, be followed as it, as it goes out into the world. And, and uh, international localization is really a sound problem and, and one that, uh, uh, that I myself and, and a group of people are working very hard uh, to improve. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, Wiley, thank you so much for your time. Uh, congratulations on your work on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And uh, it was a real pleasure talking with you. Zach, it's an absolute pleasure. Always good seeing you. So be well. Always good seeing you too. Until Thanks. next time. Thank you. <laughs>